As listeners, we want you to understand that the solution of business, tax, and legal issues depends on many factors, including local, state, and federal laws. Listeners' names and questions may be simulated. The show is not intended to offer business, tax, or legal advice, and Spiegel and Utrera PA, its attorneys, and Lawrence J. Spiegel recommend you seek legal advice from an attorney about your specific matter. AmeriLawyer.com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. There are only two types of people, those in business and those who wish they were. Join Larry Spiegel, entrepreneur, author, and managing shareholder of Spiegel and Utrera PA with host Joe Costello as they tackle issues and challenges associated with starting, expanding, buying, or selling your business in today's highly competitive marketplace. It's time to start or expand your business today. And now, here's Larry Spiegel and Joe Costello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to AmeriLawyer.com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. I'm Joe Costello, and once again, we're joined in studio by entrepreneur, author, and managing shareholder at Spiegel & Utrera, PA, Larry Spiegel. Larry, welcome back. Joe, uh, thanks for having me back. Great to be here. Oh, we got a big show planned today. we got questions from listeners out there. they got big things on their minds, and they got questions for you. Wonderful. I can't wait to help them out. I can't wait to hear what the questions are. I know there are a lot of people out there who aspire to get their own business going or get something going on the side in addition to their day job. Of course, it takes an idea, hard work, and commitment. You've got to work hard if you're going to make it in this world. Absolutely. And most people really understand that also. They're somewhat reluctant to begin frequently because of it. It can be daunting, the amount of work out there, but success certainly makes it worthwhile. But sometimes there's a hurdle in the way, a problem arises, or you have a question, and that's where we come in. If you've got a question about starting, expanding, buying, or selling your business, just give us a call at 800 520 7600. It works just like a voicemail, so you can call anytime, day or night. That's 800 520 7600. Just leave your name and your question, and we may use it right here on the show. You can also email us at radio show at com. Larry, you ready for the questions? Joe, also, I want to let the people know that they can go to com forward slash radio show and listen to prior episodes of the show. Absolutely. We've got them all right there, and even this show you're hearing right now will be on the website in case you catch the tail end of a question or, or whatever it may be. You can always go back and use it as a reference. And we are ready to rock and roll. Larry, you ready? Ready to go. First question today, coming from Perry. Hi, this is Perry, P-E-R-R-Y. I'm calling. I, I, I caught the last end of your show, and I was able to get the phone number, so I'm calling about the business that I have. Uh, I'm in the ATM business. And I'm a sole proprietor, and I don't understand if I should try to incorporate, if I should be an LLC, should I be a California corporation, should I be a Nevada or Delaware corporation. A lot of these people out there, it's giving me mixed signals, and I just caught the last end of your show, and I would like to know about your, your annual membership so that um, you guys can help me set, set up my business. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. There it is. Question from Perry. Well, Perry, thank you for your question. Uh, you have a number of parts to the question. I'm going to assume you're located in California, so it would be my recommendation uh, that you set up an entity in California, either a corporation, an S-corporation if you qualify, or a limited liability company. Now, we would strongly discourage you from being a sole proprietorship. That's what you're operating as right now because... Uh, your uh, personal liability is at stake, and we're trying to avoid that. So, Perry, the reason a lot of people tell you to set up a corporation in Nevada or Delaware is to receive the maximum asset protection. However, what they don't tell you is that you have to bring that company to California, qualify it to do business in California, and pay the California taxes, which a lot of people are trying to avoid. But you're not going to be able to do that. Now, a more reasoned view would be this. Set up the California Corporation or LLC 
And then if you want the maximum asset protection that would be affordable under the law, allow it to be owned by either a Delaware or Nevada corporation or LLC. That way you will then make full circle, receive the maximum asset protection that you would be entitled to under the law without submitting that company, either Nevada or Delaware, to the jurisdiction of the state of California. So that would be the route to go. On your question as far as membership is concerned, give us a call at 800-734-9900. We'll be happy to go over all the benefits of membership. Or visit the website, amerilawyer.com. And Perry is a perfect candidate if you happen to be driving around and catch the tail end of a question or a show and you want to go back, hit amerilawyer.com slash radio show. All of our episodes with all of our questions are there for you to listen to as often as you like or even recommend to your friends. Great question, Perry. Best of luck to you. Next one coming from Jonathan via email. Hello, I have my real estate license, but I never really got going due to the housing crisis. I'd like to try again, and I'd like to get going. Instead of pounding the streets for leads, I was thinking of specializing in people from out of state and advertising my services to potential buyers via the Internet. Can I just do that? Are there any laws about soliciting real estate over state lines? Anything I need to do other than just do it, asks Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, I don't think there's any problem at all. Uh, let's just say you're licensed in a state where the property is located and you're going out trying to sell that property over the Internet. I do not think it's a problem. On the other hand, let's say that you had this property, you had your license in your state where the property is located, and you decided you were going to travel over state line, hold a seminar, and try to sell the property there in another state. That would be a different matter. But I don't think there's any problem over the Internet. It's going to be many years before they're able to sort out all these situations. But as long as the property's in the state where you're licensed, go at it, get the leads. And as long as it is over the Internet, I don't think you'll have any problem whatsoever. Good luck to you. Good luck to you, Jonathan, and I like that idea. I like the fact that he's taken something that he started to do before the uh, economic crisis and getting back going again. Right. It's a good idea. Absolutely. If you've got a question, send it over. Give us a call, 800-520-7600. That's 800-520-7600. Questions of all types, Larry, throughout the business world, and we're getting them all here. It's amazing. It, It is. There's just so many things that come up over and over And they're different, they're unique, they're related to a particular kind of business. Uh, It's endless. Absolutely, and we'll be back with more of your questions right here on AmeriLawyer.com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. Start or Expand Your Business Today. There are some mistakes in business that may cause the occasional headache. Then there are some mistakes in business that may keep you up all night for weeks and months at a time. Avoid those mistakes by seeking strategic business and legal advice from a team of attorneys ready to help you. Spiegel and Utrera, PA's General Counsel Club, can assist you with the tough legal and business questions at crucial times. Call toll-free 800-734-9900 to receive your annual membership and be entitled to get unlimited strategic business and legal advice for a year. The General Counsel Club can assist with how to buy or sell business, converting hobby expenses into legitimate business expenses, what are legitimate business expenses for tax purposes, tips on leasing a business location, whether for retail, office, warehouse, or industrial, leasing versus buying options for vehicles and equipment, IRS examinations, audits, liens, levies, deficiencies, and settlements of tax disputes. Knowledge is power, and knowing that Spiegel and Utrera PA's General Counsel Club is one phone call away may give you the confidence to succeed during the day and rest well at night. Call 800-734-9900 or log on to AmeriLawyer.com today. Got a question about starting, expanding, buying, or selling your business? Email radio show at AmeriLawyer.com. Listeners' questions may air on episodes of AmeriLawyer.com present Start or Expand Your Business Today. That's radio show at AmeriLawyer.com. Now, back to Start or Expand Your Business Today. 
Welcome back to Start or Expand Your Business Today. Joe Costello along with Larry Spiegel taking your questions about starting, expanding, buying or selling your business. There's a lot going on out there and hopefully, hopefully, Larry, this show is a resource for entrepreneurs out there and they submit their questions. Yes, we know that it is a resource for them because we're hearing from them and they're letting us know that they do enjoy the show and uh, the question and answers uh, that are given. Just give us a call, 800-520-7600. It's just like a voicemail, folks, just like a voicemail. Of course, turn your radio down in the background if you want to ask your question while you're cruising. Be safe, of course, 800-520-7600. Day or night, you can leave your question, and we may use it on the show, just like this one from Elizabeth. Yes, hi. Um, I wanted to have a question in reference to opening up an LLC um, based out of Nevada, although um, the business is conducted in Florida, because I understand that there's more uh, protection, asset protection in Nevada. Is that uh, something that can be done if you're starting an LLC? Thank you. My name is Elizabeth. There it is. Question from Elizabeth, Larry. Well, Elizabeth, uh, this is a common question that we do hear from time to time. On the one hand, you're in one state and you want to receive the maximum asset protection that you know is available in yet another state. So uh, the enlightened view here would be to set up your LLC in Florida, uh, have it owned by a Nevada LLC, and then you have these two entities and you will be receiving the maximum asset protection. One thing about the Florida LLC is that you really have to create a multi-ownership situation there. So the Nevada LLC would own 99% of the Florida LLC and perhaps you and Aaron would own the other 1%. Uh, that would be the way to go about it. Asset protection, very important, very big. Right. Now, that's to receive the maximum asset protection. Now, mind you, there still is significant asset protection in Florida, but I would recommend rather than the LLC with Aaron, I'd, I'd rather go ahead than with the uh, subchapter S corporation, assuming they qualify. And the reason I say that is because the S corporation has been around for many, many years. We know exactly what the rulings are relative to it with the Internal Revenue Service and the courts. So I think that uh, you probably didn't like my answer because I said you would form two companies to receive the maximum asset protection. Well, that's going to cost money. So maybe the best thing to do is to set up the single entity in Florida, the S Corporation. You'll receive significant asset protection. You'll receive maximum tax advantages. And you really can't ask for much more than that and have all the other benefits of being incorporated. Elizabeth, thank you very much, and best of luck to you. And sometimes to get things going as you want, you, you might have to start two entities. Uh, if, if she wants the maximum asset protection, that's the way to go. It is, and uh, it may even require a trust involved also owning uh, something along the way. It, it can get, uh, I don't want to say it gets confusing or complicated, but... It just depends on what your goals are and what it is you want to do. We see many clients who are willing to take the extra step, spend the extra money, have the dual companies, have them yet owned by a trust on top of that because that's what they want to do. They've seen something in their experiences that require that they go ahead and do this, and they're willing to spend the money to do it. And they do it, and they get it done. Elizabeth, best of luck to you, and thanks for calling into the show. I certainly appreciate it. Next question. This one coming from Keith. Hi, my name is Keith, and I'm a realtor. The other day, I ran into someone who suggested that, as a realtor, I should incorporate myself for tax purposes. I was unable to ask him anything further, and I don't understand what he meant. Right now, I work as an independent sales agent for my broker. My question is, as a realtor, is there something I could be doing for tax purposes? Writes Keith. Well, Keith, as a realtor, and by that I mean whether you're acting as a broker realtor or an associate to a broker realtor, uh, the same applies. You should definitely set up an entity, whether that entity is a professional corporation or a limited liability company. Now, some states have different requirements when it comes to licensed individuals owning entities because the entity takes the place of the individual in the licensing process. And some states 
are not up to date as they should be with the procedure. So you have to be very careful before you set up the company. Generally, it all revolves around what is the name of your professional corporation or limited liability company. But if you do incorporate, there are advantages, for example, if you're an associate, your broker then knows uh, he's got you as an independent contractor in an ironclad situation. He'll never be responsible for any payroll taxes, workers' compensation insurance, and so forth. By having that separate legal entity, and if you've listened to the show before, you will know that you will be able to create a number of legitimate business expense deductions and report those on a separate tax return, which is critical. You'll also be able to set up a pension plan and avail yourself of other benefits that owners of corporations are able to obtain. Pension plan? Yes. That sounds interesting to, a, a, I'm sure, a lot of people out there who are trying to plan ahead for all aspects of their lives. Uh, generally, there, in that area, there's two types of plans, money purchase and the self-defined benefit. Most of these plans are money purchase, and by that we mean that each year the company decides how much money it's going to put aside. Now, one of the problems you run into with a situation like this is if you have a number of employees. The company must provide for all of those employees. So you want to be careful. Of course, these are very popular where you have, in this type of situation, the real estate individual who's taken his license and put it in a company, and he's never really going to have an employee. And he's, he takes advantage of the pension plan as it relates just to him. He never has to worry about providing pension benefits for employees. Next question. This one coming from Christine. Hi, my name is Christine, and I would like to take advantage of the current real estate market somehow. I have limited resources. What can I do to get involved? Asks Christine. Christine, thank you for your question, and uh, I hear you. Limited resources. That's not uh, something, though, that should prevent you from getting involved with the current real estate market. I would be looking at seller finance transactions and also those types of transactions where the sellers are willing to walk away from the property. Some may have already been engaged in strategic default. Now, it's beyond the scope of the show, but really what you have to do is to come up with some kind of a checklist that you would utilize and you would begin to make calls off of signs that you saw, particularly signs that were for sale by owner. And it's through that process that you're able to whittle it down and see which properties may be available to you. I also, uh, you should consider multifamily properties in your quest as well as small commercial properties. My theory is if you can buy it with nothing down and you have the time, you can create cash flow excellent work. Christine, best of luck to you. And if you've got a question like Christine's, perhaps, give us a call. 800-520-7600. Works just like a voicemail anytime, day or night. Or you can email us, radioshow at com, And we'll be back with more of your questions right here on com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. com. Start or expand your business today. Form your corporation for as little as $104.95. Each corporation is complete and includes state filing fees, corporation records book, corporate seal, articles of incorporation, corporate bylaws, corporate minutes, stock certificates, preliminary name search, and attorney's fees. Spiegel and Utrera PA and Amerilawyer.com can also help you with assumed or fictitious business names, advising on legitimate business expenses for tax purposes, discussing the converting of personal expenses into deductible business expenses, assisting you in developing a service agreement for your business, answering your questions on the advantages of minority-owned business certification, explaining the differences between a corporation and a limited liability company, and the benefits of creating either a regular corporation, S-corporation, or a limited liability company. Knowledge is power. Order over the phone at 800-603-3900. That's 800-603-3900 or online at Amerilawyer.com. Got a question about starting, expanding, buying, or selling your business? Call 800-520-7600. Just leave your name and your question. Listeners' questions may air on episodes of Amerilawyer.com present Start or Expand Your Business Today. That's 800-520-7600. Now back to 
start or expand your business today. Final segment here on Start or Expand Your Business Today. We've been mowing through these calls today, Larry, hopefully helping a lot of people out there, but we're not done yet. We've got more, but I love how enthusiastic the callers have been. They're great, and the questions just keep coming. I hope they're happy with my answers. 800-520-7600, anytime, day or night. And remember, if you miss your question, you can always go back and check it out on the website, amerilawyer.com slash radio show. That's amerilawyer.com slash radio show. Next question, this one coming from James. Yes, my name is James. I would like to know that all business contracts must be signed by both parties to make them legitimate and uh, in the court. Thank you. Question from James. Uh, well, James, thank you for your question. Now, remember that there's such a thing as an oral contract. So when you have an oral agreement, nobody has to sign it. The thing about an oral agreement you have to keep in mind, however, is that when you go to court, you've got to be able to prove it. And that's why we don't rely too much on oral agreements, because the difficulty with the proof when we're at the courthouse. So you want to keep that in mind. Now we get into that area where we have, let's say, a written agreement that's laid out. Nobody signed it, or one party signed it, or both people signed it. So you could see there where no one signed it, and then one person signed it. The element of proof diminishes a little, depending upon the situation. So I would think that's the best way to answer the question. Oral agreements are enforceable in most instances. I say in most because sometimes there's a statute that says that particular type of agreement has to be in writing. We see that with real estate. Generally, with all real estate transactions, the agreement must be in writing. But there are numerous agreements out there every day that are made and businesses conducted on it just on an oral basis. And see, when... We were getting that question. Immediately, I would have thought that it absolutely has to be signed. Otherwise, what's the point? Well, you're, you're reading into that uh, written contract when, in fact, uh, like I say, there's such a thing as an oral contract. It's funny with the email today, a lot of things that used to be conducted on an oral basis just over the telephone. Let's say you called your stockbroker, placed an order, whatever. That's that. That was all oral, and there was millions of dollars a day going uh, trading like that. Today, it's via the computer. It's all in writing. So that's helped them a great deal. And if something goes wrong, emails can be subpoenaed, and there's your proof? Well, it it's always makes it easier to prove if something's in writing. That's the whole question. Most of the time, when something's in writing, then it's the, the question for the judge is, well, what does this written document really mean? What does it say? So then it's a matter of interpretation. James, great question. Thank you very much. Final question coming up, and then Larry's final thought. I'm a small business owner that has a salesman who quit and was able to download my company's files and information before he left. Is there any legal recourse that I can take if he is stealing our customers, says John. Well, John, what I would look to there is this actual stealing of the information from your company files. I would not hesitate to file a police report in this matter, even if some period of time has elapsed. Now, the police may very well investigate it and come to the conclusion that it's what they would call a civil matter. But maybe not. It depends on the circumstances that you're able to relate to them about the, what a, let's call it, thievery of the company files. So I would start there. And the reason I would start there is because I want to document this and have uh, this proof uh, backed up by a police report that this incident actually occurred. Then, depending upon where you live, you can go to the state's attorney's office and ask them to prosecute this individual. They may very well decline that. You may also go into the civil courts. And in the civil courts, you do have redress because nobody has a right to take your company files and the information before they leave. That's just it, and I would encourage you to retain counsel and go after this salesperson vigorously. And that's the final question of the day. Thank you very much for your questions, and now it's time for Larry's final thought. Thank you, Joe. While we were going through the show today, I was, I was thinking about these questions, and 
the folks that were asking them, and I, I want to be sure that everybody understands that great achievements always require time. And uh, that's frequently easier said than done. But they have to work at it, keep their nose to the grindstone, and they will achieve the success they're looking for. Larry, great job as usual. And to you listeners out there, if you've got a question about starting, expanding, buying or selling your business, anytime, business or legal strategy, just give us a call, 800-520-7600. Remember, it works just like a voicemail, so you can call anytime, day or night. That's 800-520-7600. Leave your name and your question, and we may use it right here on the show. You can also email us at radioshow at com. And remember, there are many episodes, all of our episodes, on the site, amerilawyer.com slash radio show. Larry, take us home. Well, Joe, I just want to remind everybody that it's very important to plan your work and work your plan. He's Larry Spiegel. I'm Joe Costello. And we'll see you next time right here on AmeriLawyer.com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. AmeriLawyer.com, where understanding your business is our business. There are some mistakes in business that may cause the occasional headache. Then there are some mistakes in business that may keep you up all night for weeks and months at a time. Avoid those mistakes by seeking strategic business and legal advice from a team of attorneys ready to help you. Spiegel and Utrera, PA's General Counsel Club, can assist you with the tough legal and business questions at crucial times. Call toll-free 800-734-9900 to receive your annual membership and be entitled to get unlimited strategic business and legal advice for a year. The General Counsel Club can assist with selecting a legal legal and tax structure for your business, building business credit, when a trust should own your corporation or limited liability company, what are the benefits of forming a corporation or a limited liability company, what are the differences between a corporation and limited liability company, using employees versus independent contractors, knowledge is power, and knowing that Spiegel and Utrera PA's General Counsel Club is one phone call away may give you the confidence to succeed during the day and rest well at night. Call 800-734-9900 or log on to AmeriLawyer.com today. AmeriLawyer.com, where understanding your business is our business. Take charge of your business each week with Start or Expand Your Business Today. For more episodes of Start or Expand Your Business Today, log on to AmeriLawyer.com slash radio show. That's AmeriLawyer.com slash radio show.